will repeat uh, some of the things which I did last time. So, variables and assignments. So, Python has five types of variables. We will not use much of string and list. So, we will use integer, float, and arrays. Now, integers just a recap, quick recap. So, it is a binary representation in computer within computer, and integers can be of any length, unlike other languages, it allows any length, and uh, these are the operations. So, we will again not use this bitwise stuff uh, in this course most of the time. So, these are examples which I had put in the last class. So, uh, x to the 31 minus 1 will be this large number in decimal. Okay. So, you have to be careful today I will uh, uh, make a contrast between binary and decimal. So, this is in decimal. Now, if you want in binary or hex. So, this is a representation you did in the homework I think everybody is happy with it now. You can also do negative numbers, but python will just say minus of this. The division and reminder. So, this is a division it is an integer division. Okay. So, right now treating 5 and 3 is integer and dividing integer division. If you want a float division then you can put 5.0 by 3. So, you have to put one of them as float then it will convert the other also to float and it will give you 1.666. This is a reminder uh, these are bit operations I think I will skip. Okay. You can just so this and and uh, these are it is not okay, I think it got cut okay, this has come here 100 zero zero or 110 zero zero will give you 110 zero zero, okay. or operation and, and operation uh, you probably know from binary operation. Okay. So, let us look at real numbers which we will deal most of the time. So, there are two ways to represent real numbers. Now, this is not computer right now I will just tell you the idea. In fact, this very interesting uh, line of thought went into uh, how to represent real numbers in computer. So, the two ways which we are aware of we use the first one very often, but so this is called fixed point representation. Okay. The decimal point is fixed. So, uh, if you write in terms of formula then it is going to be looking like this. So, the less than one numbers will so this is 1 and this is 1 by 10 1 by 10 to the power m and this 10 to the power n. Okay. So, uh, with this you can represent any real number, but here my decimal point is somewhere here right here. Okay. So, this is called fixed point representation uh, we use this most often in our daily life. So, let us do an example. So, in decimal number if you have n equal to 1. So, this is n equal to 1 and m equal to 2. So, what are the numbers can I represent I know I am limited. Okay. So, if I just have this then I cannot represent all numbers a very limited set of numbers and the numbers you can represent will be these. I am focusing only on positive. So, 0 0.00. So, m is 2. So, these are the two digits and n equal to 1. So, I can go up to up to 99. Okay, so, that is 99. So, these are the numbers very limited right. I mean this that is what you can do and what is the spacing between two numbers is 0.01, but they are uniformly spaced. So, the difference is 0.01 and but it turns out that you can represent only very small set of numbers. The largest number is close to 100 and smallest number is 0.01, the smallest non zero number is 0.01, but you can do better. So, you can do better and that is what the computer scientists thought about and they said let us do called floating point representation It's a fascinating in interpret uh, representation. Now, how is it represented? is written as the the decimal part is here, but then you multiply by 10 per e. So, I am right now working with decimal, but the idea of whatever you do in decimal is same as what you do in binary not much difference. So, uh, we write this the so I have to ensure that a naught is non zero okay. you make a naught non zero and then any number can be represented like this you need you may need large m, but you can represent any number. Now, it turns out you can increase the range with this representation. I can get more set of but range of numbers, not more set range of numbers. So let's do an example. I'll go quickly. This is very obvious, but it's very interesting thing to uh, to notice. So uh, it has m plus one significant digits, right? You got this is uh, m plus one significant digits, and uh, we need to keep some digits for exponential. So let's do an example with m equal to two and two digits for e. So, I am again using 4 digits. So, with uh, so what is the 
set of numbers I can represent. So, now my E is 2 digits means minus 99 to 99, okay. range increased from minus 2 to minus 99. Of uh, course, my number is 1.00, so the uh, this part is 1.0 and 9.9, okay. this is obvious. This is. Now, let us look at are the numbers uniformly spaced in this representation, they are not uniformly spaced. So, they are uniformly spaced for one single E, but then we jump to E, uh, go to the next E, then there is a jump. So, to see an example, I like this idea, so I wanted to communicate to this, uh, this part, 1.0. So, here I am making exponential, a E is 1. So, spacing is 0.1 clearly. Now, when you go to E equal to 1, that means I am multiplying by 10. So, multiply 10, then what happens? So, I have 1.0 times 10. So, this 10, this is 11, 12. So, the number spacing has become 1. So, my spacing is not uniform in floating point representation, but my increase my range. Now, if you have the choice, which one will you choose? Of course, for computer, this is the best, because I want to represent huge number of numbers, very small and very large. But even for realistic, like for physics, this is more natural. You look at nuclear scale, then you go to molecular scale, then you go to uh, biological scale, then human scale, astrophysical scale. We always do this. We do not use, in fact, we do for our daily lives decimal as a fixed point number, but really the nature is built with this. A different scale, you need. Uh, this representation. So, nature is doing this. So, it is so in fact no wonder computer we need this. Well, I mean this is a somewhat uh, same phenomena in computer and real life or in nature actually I would say not real life nature. Okay. Now, in computer uh, how do you represent the real number in computer. Now, this is idea, but uh, instead of 10 you replace by 2. So, that is binary. So, uh, this is for double this for double. So, 1 bit for sign, 11 bits for exponential and 52 bits for precision the decimal number. Okay. So, uh, it will look like this so, 1 for sign. So, if it is 0 then it is positive and 1 is negative and uh, this is b 1 minus 1 to minus 52 this is 52 bits and exponential is represented whatever number is here you subtract minus 1 0 2 3. So, that will give you negative exponent as well as positive exponent. So, this is very simple algebra which I will not be labor on. So, you can go from minus 308 exponent to 308 which is a big number. So, in uh, in meters inverse length inverse size will be less than this you know, or in centimeter it will be less than this, but you have to still have to be careful. Suppose you want to exponentiate inverse size of what power 10 then you will exceed this. Okay. So, you have to be careful when you do exponential that is where you may exceed uh, exponent and the precision how do I know the precision. So, uh, precision will be the difference between two consecutive numbers. So, all the bits are zeros except the last bit when I subtract two consecutive numbers is that correct 52 and that means my number the difference between two consecutive number is 2 to the power minus 52. Okay. This is binary, so I have to take power with 2 and that happens to be 10 power minus 16. Okay. So, my precision is only 16 digits, anything beyond I cannot represent in my computer. Uh, if you need more precision, which sometimes people ask for it, then you need to code separately. So, there are some libraries available. So, you can use, you can go to, I mean you can use, we can double this. Now, the present computation standard is double. Now, there is enough RAM, there is enough, enough communication. So, people use standard RAM, uh, double. If you want float, then instead of 64 bits, this is 64 bits, you use 32 bits and 32 bits the numbers decrease. I think this is this probably 8 and this number is different. Okay. So, the range will decrease, but double is standard. So, use double, uh, it costs more, the time taken is roughly double of what you need do it for float. But this is more accurate, uh, most uh, people will say well, I mean compute, let computer do the work, you relax and uh, I mean let the com computer is 
there is enough number, enough power in computer you know, so you can just let it work unless there is a strong limitation of ram or computer time okay now so this is everyone yeah uh, sure sure so before there is to be 32 bit operating system right on machines right 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 then uh, matlab for example double precision would have to be 10 to the minus 16 now machines are 64 bit so does it become better no what it showed here is six, is uh, double precision 10 power minus 16 with the no no this for 64 bit machine this for 60 bit 4 bit operation now okay what has happened now this is technical part <coughs> presently the number of wires which come from from uh, from the cpu to ram the 16 wires are coming so it can access 16 bits at a time earlier the number of wires which will come out was 8 so, you could get only 8 number or sorry the 32 third not 8 32. So, 32 was more convenient and fast, but now 64 wires are coming. So, say double is standard that is why they say uh, we support double precision, double operation. Uh, if you are doing 32 bit then this precision is 36 or 37 this number is 37 not 308. No, even in 32 bit it used to be uh, 10 over 16 by MATLAB. No, well MATLAB is doing some, some work additional work. So, Python allows you to use as many numbers uh, as many accuracy you like. So okay, you can. Not doing anything extra, it's just yeah, MATLAB is using some C libraries within and which is uh, 64 bit. Okay. Uh, so, this is standard Python will be doing this, but if you want more higher precision python will take care of it and that's why python is slower c will optimize for a uniform set of data so python in matlab happens to be slow because it allows you flexibility but then it can't optimize it okay uh, okay so now you are, everyone knows how to convert this this is simple operation but uh, let's just look at one number 1.1 in decimal i want to represent in binary now, how do I do it? So, 1 is I will keep. So, 1 is remember the first a naught is 1, 1 is that should be non zero, and only one non zero number for binary is 1. Okay. So, you do not store 1, this 1 is not stored in the computer, this 1 first one. Second one is stored, so you multiply 0.1 into 2. So, this is the operation 0.1 into 2. So, 0 0.2 is less than 1, so it is 0, the first bit is 0. So, the standard stuff, no. So, Suppose I want to get the decimal of 1.35. So uh, get this off, multiply this by 10. So 3 will go to the left of decimal and you pick that, that is the first digit. Multiply by 10 after that. So that will be 0 0.5, this is taken. So this multiply by 10, then you get 5. So that is how you get the digits. So you do the same thing here, you multiply by 0 0.2, uh, 2 then 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So, these are all zeros, these are all zeros. Here I get 1, is that okay? But I request you to please do this, these are simple, simple stuff, but you should be able to convert one to other. Okay? This was done thousands of years back. So, you get 1 here, then 0 0.6 is remaining, so again keep multiplying, they get 1 here and do this. Okay? And that is how the number I will get is 3 zeros, 3 zeros here then 1 here, 1 here, then again uh, uh, this 1 here, 1 here, then 2 zeros. So, you, you do this. So, this is the binary representation of 1.1. 1 .1. It turns out it will not stop. That means, 1.1 1 .1 cannot be represented accurately in a computer. Decimal yes, 1.1 1 .1 is again 1.1 1 .1 is possible to represent using 2 digits, 2 binary, uh, 2 decimal digits but not with binary computer. Here you see is a recurring digit. So, this will recur uh, after 0.2 it will recur no. So, it is a recurring and uh, it cannot be represented accurately in computer. So, these are problems many. So, there is called round off error. So, computer has rounded off a number 1.1 1 .1 I thought was could be represented accurately inside the computer it cannot 1 by 3 of course, we cannot represent accurately in decimal itself and the same thing happens for binary. Uh, so, you can play around with these numbers it is fun, but uh, uh, I will not spend time here. So, uh, this is how you get the float hex. So, 1.1 1 .1 float hex will be exactly same number. 
and 1.5 can be represented accurately inside the computer it is 1.001 sorry 1.10 1 1.1 so is 1.1 in binary because 1 by 0 0.1 will be 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 is 0.5 yeah Uh, this one plus x a p power power I think power is 0 this power is 0. So, if yeah this power is 0 exponent is 0 ok exponent this is exponent part how do you convert ok. So, uh, let us look at it here this is simpler. So, how do you get 8? So, 8 is coming basically so the number is 1.1 all zeros like this there are 52 of them. So, so here 52 I have to start pairing. So, how many 4? So, hex is 4 no? x is 4 bits. So, 4 into 12 is 48 right. So, 48 bits will be units of 4, but the last 3 is not units of 4 3. So, this should not be there. So, there will be lot of zeros here. So, this is so, here of 14 into 13 into 4 is 52. Okay. So, it comes in bunch of 4. So, this is 8, this is 8 2 to the 3, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, and the rest are zeros. That is why we have 1.8. Okay. Now, here why I am writing 1. So, here you see this first 4, this is 1. Okay, so, that is 1. Now, rest all is this is 9, right? This is 9, so 9, and this repeats, 9 will repeat. So, so this is hex, this one is hex, and this is binary. So, I write 2 that is binary. Okay, computer will print hex, hex is more convenient, no? otherwise, 52 digits you do not want to write. Is that clear? Okay. Okay. So let's let's do it. 3.0. So 3.0 you have to write. Uh, so 0 0.3 into 10. 3.0. So let's just convert. So actually you have to convert 3. Point int no. 3.0. So you have to no. You have to convert to binary. So that so this is 2 to the power. So basically you want to write 3.0 as some number times 2 to the power exponent. Okay. Now, uh, you have to, so uh, 3 will be, so I have to, I can of course use the computer. 101. So, 101 is it? 101, but uh, uh, I need a float, uh, float representation. Okay. So, float representation uh, I need to do, so, so 1 1, so this is going to be, so 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 1 you take it out and then is going to be 1.5. Okay. So, 1, so this is how you will represent, so this is going to be 1.1 into exponent will be 1, 2 to the power 1. So, check in uh, in your computer, it's, this is how it should happen. Okay. So, the exponent is in power of 2. So, complex float. So, Python will allow float operations, a complex float representation it is very simple. You write the number as real plus imaginary j, 1 plus 1 j, and you can do operations with that. So, I can square a number. So, x square this x square, x square is 2 j, you can verify this is it. Now, multiply by a number uh, absolute of x or conjugate of x. Okay. So, it is very useful if you are doing quantum mechanics, it is very useful to do complex operations okay. and uh, it is uh, trivial. Okay. Next is strings, we do not use very often, but uh, computer scientists use all the time. In fact, everything is manipulation of strings. Uh, I feed in my program, right now this computer is manipulating string. 
displaying it and all that is a string manipulation. So, how is string represented? So, I take variable x and you just say within double quotes or single quote, single quote double quote are interchangeable. So, x is this is string ok. So, this is a variable x has a value this string is stored in x. So, please keep in mind if you are not used to computing when I say x equal to something it does not mean I am equating it this means I am assigning to x ok this is not equal operation in, in math the assignment operation. So, x will get this assignment of the full string and store it we do not need to worry about how it stores it stores. Now, when I say so in uh, this is straight from python ok. So, I just cut pasted. So, in is input and out is output uh, I do not have different colors on this on this string I just cut pasted in, in this keynote. So, this will you will get exactly same on your computer. So, when I say x means I will I am asking what is x and the answer is this is string ok we will come within quotes saying that it is a string. Now, I can add something to that string this is called concatenation you can concatenate. So, I add something to string so x plus you just say any string. So, now the new string which is bigger string is this this string high string ok. So, you can add string uh, you can delete string uh, part of it. So, all that operation can be done uh, we will not uh, we will not do this uh, uh, in our course we do except for input output ok. So, input output is we need some communication with the uh, computer. So, it is very easy. So, one standard way to output a variable is print uh, you can print it on the screen and also you can print to a file ok that I will not discuss right now you can print numbers to a file or put numbers to a file that part I will discuss later I mean if a large arrays uh, weather data you know. So, you want to put it in a file and that will, will be done later right now you can output a number uh, uh, x equal to 5 is a print x x of course, one simple way is to just say x it will give the value of x you do not need to print. So, output is for print as well as uh, you can store it some file, but file part we will do later. Uh, for input some homework may have this kind of exercise. So, you can in so this in so you can put in the computer x equal to input this and so what will come out at uh, at the bottom will be this without this equal to then you could put a number 10 and it will go in and store in x ok. But of course, one simple way is to do what put x equal to 10. So, in python you do not need to worry about input output the c you need to worry about it, but uh, it is a interpreter language. So, I just say x equal to 10 what really is meaningful is to operate on data large data input well we are not very large data, but data let us say 1000 numbers okay, that you need to read from a file but that we will do later ok. So, x is already there. So, this part you have to enter you enter it from your keyboard. So, we may give homework saying well put some number and do something on it. So, that is how you can do it ok. The next is important thing which I will just cover for completeness is called list uh, which again we do not use in physics, but computer scientists use it uh, more often. This is a collection of objects ok list is collection of objects and this objects could be of different type. So, some could be integer some could be real some could be string. So, one example is uh, I missed it file is it. So, I so 1 2 high. So, this is 3 numbers 1 2 high and uh, actually I may I did seem to uh, yeah. So, this is the, this is a string this is a list. So, my list is y equal to 1. So, you put within brackets within this square brackets 1 2 and the 3 elements 1 2 and high ok. Now, 2 integers and 1 string is allowed uh, C will not allow this, but python allows it and uh, uh, how are they stored there are 3 elements 1 2 high and how do I access it. So, I can access by saying this is 0th element. So, python indexing starts from 0 not from 1. So, photon starts from 1, but C does from 0 and python also python and C have very similar array operation. So, it starts from 0. So, the indices are index no you know to catch something you need to get the roll number. So, these are roll numbers for this object, but roll number starts from 0 
why 0 anyone can I mean is very obvious why should not we start from 1. No, no. No, said zero is more natural. Okay, okay. So addresses are generated like address is again a binary number. So the first number binary is zero 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 all zeros. So that's an address. It's a valid address. My house number is zero. It's a valid address. Okay. So that's a uh, so, is you are you when you start that creating the addresses, you start with 0, 0, 0, then 0, 0, 0, 1 like that. So, 0 is the first number for address, and which is that is how it start. So, C started this notation, and the address is 0, first 0. So, 0, then 1 and 2. You can also say from minus. So, minus 1 is the last element. So, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So, you can go from the right to the left. So, I can access, access it uh, access using y i. So, these are what I printed. So, y 0 is 1, y 1 is 2, y 2 is high and y minus 1 is high again. So, uh, this is illustration it works. Okay. So, you can access if you the last element is y minus 1 you do not need to say uh, if you do not know the size is very useful. Uh, you can also get the size of this array, uh, not array. So the list. Why is the list? Call L e n length. L e n of y will give the length. Now here this is in square bracket. Okay, so access is by square bracket. And when I say length, so all the function calls are with small brackets. So arguments will go in small brackets. So you have to be careful with uh, what you are using. You can delete an element. So I can delete y one. So y one will be second element not the first element. So, if you delete the y 1 then what is left is 1 high. Okay. So, you can do these operations with list, but list is since it has any kind of elements are allowed any type of elements uh, it is not very fast. So, what people have done so I will just tell you few more operations the list you can if you say star 2 it does not multiply because it is it is not integer or float. So, it will just double it. So, you can see that there are 6 elements and this doubled. You can add a uh, new element uh, 10 it is added in this uh, append. So, append is I appended 2 elements uh, 3 in computer. So, append is very nice operation and uh, you can pop you can basically access. So, this pop is access. So, pop 2 third element pop 2 is third. No? So, this is a confusion you have to get used to 0 1 2 that is. So, these are operations for the list uh, we can do slice. So, we can get part of the list not full list, but part of the list uh, which is useful. So, this is tricky part okay. this is uh, confusing. So, I just want to spend bit of time on this. So, uh, India has 5 characters. So, I am storing as, as a string. So, it has 5, so x equal to India. So, it has 5. So, I, if I say x 0, it will be 1 i, x 4 will be a. Now, if I so I can access it like what I told in the earlier slide, but I want to get a bunch of them one shot. So, if I say 0 colon 3, what should I expect? So, you should expect 0 to 3 or 0 to 2 and the way to understand this is for the range this is called range operation the range operation range operation is not starting from the middle range operation is starting from the wall. So, India is stored this this stored with uh, these are boxes and this is a wall of the box you know. So, this index is the wall index not the index of the house so, is the wall of the house wall of the rooms. So, uh, so this is 0, 0 is the first wall second wall third wall fourth wall. So, I say what is contained between 0 wall and third wall and that will be i n d. So, if you think like this you will get it right. So, you have to just so the range object 
is a slightly different than indexing and that is the convention followed in python i mean uh, why they did it i don't know but this something was starts and then this continues you don't want to change it so range is also an operation a range is also a function range so you can give 0 3 it will give you 1 2 3 you can also say range 3 that is the same thing as 0 1 2 okay range 3 is not 0 to 3 0 to 2 so this is about list now we will come to uh, arrays and this is called numpy arrays so what is numpy so numpy is numerical python okay we focus on numpy can do various things but we'll just focus on numpy is a array of numbers integer and real and this is what we'll uh, use in our course we're going to focus on numpy arrays so this is an example of numpy so how we write numpy array now you shouldn't say y equal to 1 bracket 1 comma 2 there will be a list so array is a library now i'll just make one more remark that when we say pylab i python minus minus pylab so pylab imports various libraries okay so one of the libraries it imports is numpy numerical python so it has very rich operation on arrays which i will show you some of it so if i say 1 colon 2 that's a list that's part of standard python but numpy has you have to say array within bracket so this is the argument of a function called array array is a function okay with coming in square uh, in a uh, small bracket fine so this is it will this is same objective as list except it will be fast and is is limited to numbers for our course we'll just stick to numbers so you should use this not 1 comma 2 because many operations will not be allowed on list like if i say y star 2 you saw that it is not multiplying the uh, by the elements by 2 i want it to multiply by 2 but this will do it so if i just say y star 2 then it will multiply each element by 2 okay so this is quick no if you wrote in, wrote in c you have to make a loop so this does in one shot this multiplies by 2 uh, you can get the size of the array or you can say length this i prefer this this is preferred okay length len y you can add a number to each element so y plus 3 is adding to each element of y a number 3 so it will give you 4 comma 5 so this is useful operation which you will need to do later you can also create a 2d arrays so 2d array will be you put bracket then another bracket within is that clear so this is 2d array so there is a square bracket here and here then there are 0 1 and 1 0 so this is what what are matrix is it not identity 0 1 1 0 so it's a 2d matrix uh, 0 1 0 1 1 0 it's an array for it for computer it is an array it has elements 0 1 1 0 so uh, if i say uh, x then i will so this this i should not have done x is if i want to know what this x is x is an array with these entries i can get the determinant of x so x it will treat it as a matrix one shot and determinant is minus 1 i can get the eigen values of x and eigen vectors so say eigen x so eigen values are 1 minus 1 is correct and the eigen vectors are two of them are this okay, 1 minus 1 and 1 1 so let's do another example. Y is array one comma two. Uh, Z is four five. I can take a square root of y. Square root of y is it'll take square root of each element. So it's going to give us one square root two, and I can add these two arrays. Just do plus. So it's adding element by element. Most of the operations are element by element. So it'll do this operation element by element. Slicing can be done with numpy arrays as well, uh, and you can also create element uh, array with 4 now sometimes i don't know the entries but i just want to create a f array with size 4 so i can create in fact i use most of the range zeros 4 so you'll create an array with four entries which are zeros a range 0 to 3 is very useful so it is going to create from 0 to 1 2 this is like range exactly a range but is a numpy function you have to put a in front uh, once is all ones empty is the zeros so these are same as this we can also very useful function called lin space linear spacing so this is example i want to create 
NumPy array with 9 elements which are equispaced from 1 to 2 inclusive of 1 and 2. So, what is the difference between the consecutive numbers 1 by 8. So, these are the entries 1, 1.125. So, lin space is a very useful function. I can create an x axis with lin space points. Okay, so, append yeah, yeah. appending here uh, numpy arrays uh, size is fixed uh, you cannot append as far as I know uh, numpy arrays you cannot append numpy arrays uh, append will not work for numpy array uh, you cannot add an element in that. Uh, so, you have to start you can start with a list now I may be wrong in this. Huh? So, you can start with a list append then you can convert it to numpy array. So, you can convert a list to a numpy array uh, and uh, so that is that is what I did at one point. So, that I will show you in the next class I will do that. So, is that ok just one. So, let us answer his question first. So, lin space is so the three three arguments first is the starting number second is a last number and how many points will be there including these two points. So, the 9 points. So, how many so you create a size of the array you create an array of size 9. So, that is the third third argument ok. So, I want a, a size 9 array with 1 and 2 and all the elements must be equispaced. So, this is the answer. Okay, some more one more question. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can put, like for example, here this will treat as integer, but it will convert it to float if required. For for uh, for numpy array, uh, not string. String as well. String is possible, but uh, I have not worked with that. Uh, but you can put. Uh, so, I can say y equal to 1 comma 1.1 1 .1. Uh, this is like what you want. So, this is fine, but it will convert 1 to 1 uh, 1.0 uh, it does something inside uh, you can do the type. So, I am not sure what, what that is uh, d type. So, to get a type we will get this. is integer float. So, it right now it is storing as uh, integer and float, but uh, when required it will change. So, a python is not strict typing. So, type will be changed according to the need same variable y or uh, let us say. So, this is example I, I think I will not start the next set of uh, slides I can say 5 then same x I can put 11.0. So, right now x is integer but now it will become float same x okay, which is not allowed in C. So, you cannot store a float number in an integer I could also do a string. So, it is not a strict typing. So, that is why it is easy to program you do not need to worry about types, but also it is uh, inefficient and prone to errors also. No? So, some variable you thought it is 5, but it somewhere you made it 11.0 or string. So, you need to be careful. Uh, typing is very useful for large codes strict typing uh, one for efficiency second is uh, errors you do not do errors. Now, this part I will not uh, delve into it. Okay. So, following typing is useful, but python the power is because you do not type it uh, means you understand what is integer float string they are called type what type of variables they are and uh, python says well I do not care uh, I will use whatever is assignment it will the type will of the variable will be of that type ok. So, next class uh, we will uh, start working on the structure of the uh, control structures in python. So, you can do if loops uh, actually I have two minutes. So, I, but I am going slow actually I should go a bit faster. 
you can do f while loop for loop uh, you can write functions. Now, uh, there will be homework based on that. So, I will assign the homework, but Monday I will cover uh, hopefully all of it. Uh, uh, it is very simple. Uh, so, you can do if statements, uh, for statements. So, you need so every any language will have three structures. Uh, so, one thing is of course, these are called simple structures. So, set of statements one after the other. Second is branching statements. So, we need to take a decision. No? So, if something is true then you do something else do something else. So, Python will have this branching thing and repetitive. So, something repeating. So, it should allow. So, I should mean not be writing for i equal to 1 do this, for i equal to 2 do this, for i equal to 3 do that. So, it says for i equal to 1 to 10 do this. So, this called loops and the other important thing is called function. So, something you want to use again and again like sign function. So, I do not want to be writing that set of lines to compute sin of 5 then for sin 15 or sin 1.5 you should not be writing this again and again. So, you write a function which you can call whenever you need it. So, these are constructs we need it for this course. So, uh, this I will do in the next class.